In this video, I want to talk about how to get started with completing week one of Broody Flock. So um, the first thing I do want to mention is make sure that you do try playing the WebGL build of this so you can get an idea of what we're going for. So we're not going to be creating the whole game in one week. We're going to be creating some starter um, placeholder assets. Uh, we're going to just get our script kind of started just so we're getting some basic movement going. And then in later weeks, we're going to refine this a little bit more. So the first thing you might want to do um, if you have kind of been following along and you have um, your your environment, you have your player and you have your on fire cube um, binded, bound already, um, you might want to unpack your nested parent just because it's going to make your life a little bit easier because we do need to put some scripts on things in here. So if you right click on that, you can go to prefab and you can unpack it. This will kind of take it out of, um, like disassociate it, it with that prefab so we can easily pull these out. So I can take those three things. Um, the main camera, the player follow camera, and the player capsule and um, pull them out. And then we can go ahead and delete this. So we should always just double check that this does still work. It's always a good habit to get into. And we still have functionality in here. So we should be good to go now to start actually um, creating what the directions tell us to. So if we go to the instructions, um, what I would recommend first, obviously, is um, read through it, play the demo. But if you've been following along with the videos, we have done this um, stuff, these one through five. So we should be pretty good to go at, um, to start the rest. I'd recommend just getting your Unity editor work done first and then focus on the controls, or I'm sorry, the scripts down here. So the first thing would be to just create these scripts in here. Um, they don't need anything in them um, yet. They can just have the blank, you know, the, the starter content. Um, that way that at least if you have them, even if they're empty, you can go ahead and create your prefabs. So I do have this one, if I pull up my other version of it, I can show it to you what my kind of what everything looks like. Um, yours probably won't be pink. Don't worry about that. This is actually a mistake on my end. It doesn't affect anything, so I didn't bother to fix it. Um, so if yours isn't pink, it shouldn't be pink. If it is pink, it's not the end of the world anyway. So as far as assets go, I have a scripts folder that I have my chick script, hen script, my player controller script, nest and projectiles. So make sure, you know, make those. They don't need to have anything in them yet. Create a prefabs folder and I do have my four prefabs that are listed in um, here. So these four, the chick, the hen, the nest, and the projectile. So if I take a look for instance at my chick prefab, um, it is just a cube scaled down to 0.3 um, it does have a box collider on it, it does have a rigid body on it, and it does have the chick script. So most likely yours is going to be blank. Um, since it's self-created, this, this script's completely done, that's why we have all these exposed things. But as long as you have it in there, um, when you go back and actually code out your script, um, it'll just update. So that's the chick. The hen um, is just another cube with the scale set to 111. Um, it has the box collider on it and it has a rigid body and it has the hen script attached to it. The nest is just a, uh, what would you call this? Like the cylinder, uh, if you right click, it's just a 3D object cylinder on there um, with a scale of one, go back to it, of uh, 1.1 1. 1 and 1. It has a capsule collider on it. It has the nest script on it. We don't need to put a rigid body on this since it's not going to be interacting with anything. So make sure that you do have this set up as well. And then last is the projectile, which is just a capsule mesh. Um, 0.2, 0.2, 0.2. This is just going to be our stand-in until next week when we add our food. I think it's next week we add the food models in. 
um, it works good enough for now. So scale down to 0.2. Um, it has a capsule collider, it has a rigid body on it, and it has the projectile script as well. So um, at the end of this week, um, it should be working okay. Um, we're probably going to have to tweak some of it later. Um, and so like, for instance, like the, the hen does interact with the um, capsules, but it doesn't knock it back too bad. Um, there's reasons for that. And as long as they're kind of disappearing and it's kind of coded in, we'll be able to fix it more later. Nothing actually happens yet, like where there's no like death or anything. Um, if we do run into the chicks, uh, they do disappear. The chicks do run towards the food. So all of the basic gameplay is done. Um, and then we can refine it after this week. So if we take a look at what scripts we need to do, um, there is a lot of stuff kind of spelled out in Blackboard to kind of give you some hints. And in fact, I did start to kind of make um, like uh, a little, I, I, made, I made, a, made some graphics to kind of help you out as well. When I'm about to start coding out my um, scripts, what I really like to do is I kind of like to design them first. I like to go through the information that I have and start to maybe think about the logic I'm going to need to do in there um, before I write a single line of code. And there's a lot of information written on Blackboard for us. So I'm going to kind of go through all of the scripts based on the information in Blackboard. And we're going to actually design out all of the code without having to write a line of code yet. So starting with the My Player Controller script, one of the first things I usually like to do is I want to make sure that I have listed somewhere all of the usings I need. So those are those things at the top. And um, so if I list them out, uh, I know I'm going to need the Unity engine. And kind of as a hint, um, if you haven't worked with the new input system before, is we're going to need to to access that on fire event that we we put in in the in the previous video. And in order to do that, we're going to need access to that Unity Engine dot input system library. So it's important to make sure that we are aware of all of the stuff that needs to go in at the top. Next, if you read the directions, I do tell you about some class scoped variables that you should use. Obviously, there might be more than this. These are just the ones that I kind of hinted at that would be really help that you should use, but you might end up adding more than this. It, you know, I, I'm not going to say you do have to, but just be aware that you don't have to just use these. If you need more, you can add more. So for instance, um, we're going to need to know what object is the projectile. So we're going to have a class scoped game object called projectile, and we need to know how how hard we're going to throw that projectile from the player. So we're going to have a throw force float for that. Once I have like these kind of basic things, and this is kind of an organic process when I am doing it doing it for myself, where I might be adding and taking away as I'm kind of going through this. Um, I'm going to go through the methods and kind of design what methods I need. And again, I told you on Blackboard what methods you, you have to work with. And it's possible that you might come up with a couple met helper methods on your own that you might want to add, and that's fine. As far as methods go, the first one is going to be the onFire method. And this one is, um, and I just copied, oops, sorry, let me hide this so we can focus on this. Um, I just copied the instructions from Blackboard and kind of pasted it in here. And those instructions could easily be the comments in your code for this so that you know exactly what this method is supposed to do. So um, this method, public void on fire, works with the input system to set, set up in the class demos. That was the previous video, video we did. When the left mouse button is clicked during gameplay, this method is called use this to throw the projectile. So um, now that we have kind of an understanding about that, we could start trying to figure out a little bit, you know, maybe some pseudo code or just kind of an idea of that flow of this method. So for instance, um, maybe it would be good to first try to do a debug.log 
uh, just to make sure that our on fire is working correctly. Like, you know, if we do left mouse button click, something is being triggered in our input system and it does work. And once we know that that works, like we can kind of move on. Um, so what do we need to have happen? We need to be able to instantiate that projectile. And in order to do that, we need to know its position in the world. So um, this is being attached to the player. So maybe there's something with like the player's position we can do with that. Um, I'm going to kind of give you a hint that this kind of works, but you're going to have to there, there's a there's an interesting thing that happens um, that you're going to have to take into account when you do that. So once we know its position and we instantiate it, we then need to apply a force to it, like a forward force to it, um, to shoot it outwards from the player. And this is something very similar to something you did in the Unit 5 tutorial. So maybe go back and look at your notes on that and, and see if you did something kind of similar to instantiating and then applying a force to something. So the other thing that the My Player Controller needs to do is we do need to have an on controller collider hit. So um, the directions on Blackboard say that this is uh, used to determine if you run into a chick. And if you do, destroy the chick out of the scene. So this one is slightly different and I kind of gave you specific directions for this that you it needs to be the on controller collider hit not on coll you know there we've been we've done other types of colliders but just the nature of how that first person character works it needs to be the on controller collider hit and you can just use it the same way that you've um, done other collision events so kind of pseudo coding that out a little bit we need to check to see if the collision event that we just encountered, because this only gets triggered if we have a collision event, was that a chick? And if it is a chick, destroy it. And we only want to destroy it, though, if, if it is a chick. Um, this is something, you did something very similar to this in Unit 5 as well. So if you don't quite remember, maybe go back and take a look at that tutorial and see where you did something close to this. So um, that's it for the player and you know once you get that working you should be able to move around you should be able to fire projectiles and if you run into a chick it should destroy it. So the next script we can talk about is going to be our projectile script. This is what gets attached to that object that we're going to throw and again there's a lot of stuff listed on Blackboard that tells you what the script needs to do. So again, the first thing we should do is make sure that we know what usings we need, and this one's very easy. We just need to use the Unity Engine. We don't have any other special things that we need to do with this one. As far as variables go, there are some listed on Blackboard that you need. For instance, we need an int timer to keep track of um, how long we want our projectiles to exist in the world, because they can't last forever. They do need to eventually disappear, so we can use this as how long the projectile should exist. The last thing is we do need a knockback power. So when this projectile hits a hen, how much power should it have? And we're just going to use a float for that. Um, so as far as methods go, um, there are three that you probably need to think of. Um, the first one is that we need to have our coroutine edge that's kind of down here because the food it's going to end up being a piece of food needs to disappear after a certain amount of time so what we need to have happen inside this coroutine is we're going to count down until the time has reached the timer or count up whichever way you want to do it and after the timer is done destroy that destroy this projectile and coroutines were covered in units four and five. So if you do need to go back to um, look at that, make sure you know you look in those areas. So with that coroutine, we do need a t we do need to start the coroutine, and we want to begin the coroutine counter when the projectile comes into existence when you shoot it out. So we're going to need to use the start 
method to begin our coroutine. So don't forget about that. If you don't actually start it, it's not going to it's not going to ever run. The last one, and this one is also mentioned in Blackboard, is we do need to have um, a collider event. And this one's just an on collision enter. It doesn't need to be the fancy one like we did on the player. So this collision method only works on a hen. It should knock back the hen, but only if the projectile is airborne. Because if it's just laying on the ground, we don't want the hen to, to do something. You know, it's not going to knock the hen back if it's laying on the ground. But if the hen encounters it on the ground or flying, it should destroy itself. So if the hen, hen interacts with this projectile, it disappears. But it only knocks back the hen if it's currently flying through the air. So if we kind of break this down into what we're going to need to do, um, this one is a little bit more complicated. This one might take a little bit of thinking. So obviously the first thing that we can do is we can check to see if the collision event was a hen. Because if it wasn't a hen, we're just going to kind of keep on going. We don't need, we don't care. We then need to check that if we did run into a hen, we need to check to see if the projectile is flying. And all we're going to kind of talk about for for states flying is if it's not laying on the ground. So it doesn't actually have to be moving. It just has to be not touching the ground. And if it is running into a hen, and if it is in the air, we're going to use a force to knock back the hen. And if um, it does run into a hen, regardless of if it's flying or not, just in general, if it runs into a hen, we're going to destroy that projectile. And one of the big things to think about is how are you going to determine if it is flying or not? And I kind of gave a real big hint on this is flying. Um, you know, maybe think about about ways to, to figure, to mark whether or not this projectile is currently in the air or not. And that's it for kind of talking a little bit about the projectile. And let's go on to the next one. The next one I want to talk about is the hen. And this one isn't going to be too bad. Um, this is very similar to something that we did in unit four with the, the sumo balls. So um, definitely refer back to unit four, maybe for some hints on that. So the usings is very easy. We just need to make sure that we're using the Unity engine. There's nothing fancy with that. As far as variables go, um, you at least need to have one for speed. And we want to um, only have this hen chase after the player if it gets close enough. So if, if the hen is across the, the, the farmyard, we don't want it to run all the way over to the player. We only want to aggro this if we're a certain distance away. So we're going to keep that as a float of how far away until our hen gets mad and starts chasing after you. So um, as far as methods go, we're going to need to have one for um, cold, like move somewhere. Let me scroll down to this one. And this one is going to, um, and this is listed in Blackboard, this will move and rotate the hen towards the player if the player is close enough. So we're only going to care about this if the player does get close enough to this. So um, the first thing we're going to have to do before we move is to find out how far away the player is from this hen. Um, so kind of giving you a real big hint here, if you Google Unity, find the distance between two objects, you're going to get an easy way to find this out. And then um, once we know how far away the hen is from the player, if the player is close enough, we're going to move towards the player. And um, the one big difference between this and Unit 4 is that this isn't a ball. So um, it was really easy with those sumo balls because you could just add a force to it and just roll it. But we can't do that. We can't just apply a force to a cube because 
it doesn't work that way. It's not it's not a uh, something that rolls. So another big hint here is um, try googling the phrase Unity one object move towards another and see what comes up and see if you can figure out how to implement that. So we got this kind of going where we need to move somewhere but um, we're still going to have to call it somewhere. So this is kind of from um, unit 4 a little bit where you might want to go back and kind of look at those sumo balls even if we aren't applying force. So you're probably going to have to put this in update because it's going to need to check every frame if the player's close enough and if it is start moving towards that player. And don't forget that you might need a start depending on some of the variables that you use. Um, you might use more variables than I have listed here. Don't forget that you might need to set stuff up in your start method in order for things to work correctly. So a little bit of Googling in this one, but these should are usually, if you Google these, are, tend to be the first result. So kind of keep that in mind with looking up these things. Now the next one is going to be the chick script and this one might end up being the more complicated script that you need to do this week. So don't save it for last. Um, you might want to kind of get it started just so that if you do need help on it before it's due you can ask me for some help. As far as usings go this one's really easy where we're just using the Unity engine for this one. Variables, the ones that you have to use, and again, you might end up adding more for yourself, but the ones that you need to use for the direct, based on the directions is you need um, a float for the speed so that you know how you can adjust how fast the chick moves. You need a float for distance away. And what this is, is it's almost the opposite of how the hen works. So if you get too close to a hen, the hen starts chasing you. If you get too close to a chick, the chick runs away from you. So um, you need to set how far away, or you know how close do you get to a chick before it starts running away. The last one is an integer to keep track of grow up, which is how many seconds before a chick turns into a hen. So um, again, you might end up adding more up here depending on how you decide to code out your methods. So the easiest one to probably talk about is going to be that grow up because it's just another coroutine that turns the chick into a hen after a set amount of time. So, you know, it's just another count, like a, like a timer kind of coroutine where after a certain amount of time, the hen grows up. And what does that mean? That means that when a hen is growing up, you need to instantiate the hen, instantiate a new hen model and then destroy the chick. So kind of a hint, don't destroy the chick first or else the hen won't instantiate because you will just destroy the script. So make sure that you are instantiating a hen first in the spot of the chick and then destroy the chick. So um, again, we're going to need to make sure that our coroutine does start. So kind of a big hint, um, don't forget that you do have that void start method. Maybe you need to start something and start when the chick first appears. Uh, you might also, uh, let's see, let's do with the move somewhere next. So we're going to need to create a method called move somewhere that's kind of similar to the hen where um, the chick moves in a direction. So this handles the move and rotate of the chick away or towards different objects depending on the state of the game. So if you read the directions, the chick has some interesting behavior to itself and you do need to make sure that you understand this. So the chick is always moving towards something. If there's food, aka a projectile, it always moves towards the food. Like that is its number one is moving towards the closest piece of food, no matter what. If there's no food and the player is within that distance away, the chick moves in the opposite direction of the player. If there's no food and the player isn't within a certain distance, the chick should move towards the closest hen. After a certain amount of time has passed, the chick should grow up into a hen. Okay, so um, the move somewhere is a little bit more complicated. So we're going to need to do some figuring out here. 
So the first thing that we need to do is we need to see if there's food. And if there's food, move towards the closest piece of food. If there's no food, we need to see if the player is within range. If the player is in within range, run away from the player. If the player is too far away, move towards a hen. So um, we're going to be handling a lot of this stuff with a, another method called um, Oops, hold on, sorry. Uh, find closest object. And what this does is it's going to return a game object. And what we're going to send to it is a string that we're referring to as tag. This is a huge hint on how this works. Um, so that if we're looking for a projectile, we could send a string called projectile and it will find the closest projectile. If we need to find a hen, it could look for a, um, you know, we send it the string of hen and look for something tagged hen. So this method finds the closest object with the tag name sent as an argument with this thing right here. It returns the object. And if there isn't any objects in this, in that, tag in the scene with the tag in the scene it returns null so like there might not be a projectile in the scene and if there isn't um and that's what you're looking for just send null back because then it's going to go through you know in there move somewhere it's going to go do something else so this one um I'm giving some hints on this one. I know it might seem really complex at first, but there's some really neat things you can do in Unity to make this really easy. Uh, the first one, um, obviously, if, if we're trying to do this, is we need to store all the objects in the scene with a given tag in an array. So we need to be able to search the whole scene, like that hierarchy, and look for anything in there that has this tag like for, i'm going to use the example of the projectile tag so if we've shot like five projectiles um we're going to have a five element array that has all five of those objects in there um as a huge hint google the term unity find all objects with tag and see what pops up and um i think you're going to be pleasantly surprised with what gets ret returned from that Google search. So once we have all those objects, we need to see if there are things in that array, you know, and um, go through them. If there are things in the array, we need to go through them and find the one that's closest to the chick and then return that object. So we'll have to check them for their distance to the chick. There, you know, again, there's ways to find distances we kind of talked about that with the hen a little bit. Um, and whichever one's the closest one to the chick, have the chick, you know, that's the object we're returning. However, if there aren't any objects with that tag, like there, nothing came up with what we do here, just return null instead of an, that specific object. Uh, so that should be it for the chick. And we have one more script to talk about and that is going to be the nest script. This one's a pretty simple one. Um, the only usings it needs is the uh, Unity engine. And as far as classical variables, the ones that you do need up there, you need to have a game object that you're going to spawn from the nest, AKA the chick. So we're just gonna call it chick. And you need a spawn time minimum and a spawn time maximum. So like. This is going to be the range between when a new chick is going to spawn so that it's not always the same number. There's a little bit of variation to this. So we have those at the top. So um, as far as methods go, we're only going to need the start method and a coroutine called um, spawn target. So this coroutine, um, the directions for it is, is a coroutine that spawns a chick randomly around the nest not in the same point and then and not in the nest and then waits a random time between the minimum and maximum time before spawning another one so we don't want to run into any kind of weird mesh issues by having that chick just spawning right in the middle of of that nest so um we're going to have to pick kind of a area around it 
as its instantiation. So as far as like what we need to do with this is you're going to want to wait for the random amount of seconds between the min and max. You're then going to want to get a random spot around the nest. And as a huge hint, um, Google other types of random Unity has. So we've worked with random.range. Look to see if there's other types of Unity random.somethings that can help you out in this situation. And once we have that location, we can instantiate a chick at that random spot. And then the coroutine, you know, will count down another time. So that's it as far as kind of talking a little bit about the script. What I would recommend you do is definitely make sure you get the Unity editor stuff done before you come to class. Hopefully you've watched this whole video about the scripts. Maybe you're kind of going in and maybe just setting up the most basics of it, like getting um, at least the information from those images into your scripts so that you can come to class and ask questions about it. Um, if there are areas that are super sticky, as far as like you're really not quite certain what to do, we can always delve into some some deeper pseudo code and kind of talk it out as a class on ways to approach some of these methods. But um, we need to make sure that we are using our time wisely in class. So hopefully you come prepared so that we can go over necessary things during our time together this week.